the Battle of Tours, also called the Battle of Poitiers and by Arab sources. Battle of the Palace of the Martyrs was fought in an area between the cities of Poitiers and Tours, in north-central France, near the village of moussache la bataille about 20 kilometers northeast of Poitiers. The location of the battle was close to the border between the Frankish realm and then-independent Aquitaine. The battle pitted Frankish and Burgundian forces under Austrasian mayor of the palace Charles Martel against an army of Umayyad Caliphate led by Abdul Rahman al-Ghafiqi, governor-general of Al-Andalus. The Franks were victorious. Abdul Rahman al-Ghafiqi was killed, and Charles subsequently extended his authority in the south. 9th century chroniclers, who interpreted the outcome of the battle as divine judgment in his favor, gave Charles the nickname Martellus. Details of the battle, including its exact location and the number of combatants, cannot be determined from accounts that have survived. Notably, the Frankish troops won the battle without cavalry. Later Christian chroniclers and pre-20th century historians praised Charles Martel as the champion of Christianity, characterizing the battle as the decisive turning point in the struggle against Islam, a struggle which preserved Christianity as the religion of Europe, according to modern military historian Victor Davis Hansen. Most of the 18th and 19th century historians, like Gibbon, saw Poitiers as a landmark battle that marked the high tide of the Muslim advance into Europe. Leopold von Ranke felt that Poitiers was the turning point of one of the most important epochs in the history of the world. There is little dispute that the battle helped lay the foundations of the Carolingian Empire and Frankish domination of Europe for the next century. Most historians agree that the establishment of Frankish power in Western Europe shaped that continent's destiny and the Battle of Tours confirmed that power. Background The Battle of Tours followed 21 years of Umayyad conquests in Europe which had begun with the invasion of the Visigothic Christian kingdoms of the Iberian Peninsula in 711. These were followed by military expeditions into the Frankish territories of Gaul, former provinces of the Roman Empire. Umayyad military campaigns had reached northward into Aquitaine and Burgundy, including a major engagement at Bordeaux and a raid on Autun. Charles's victory is widely believed to have stopped the northward advance of Umayyad forces from the Iberian Peninsula, and to have preserved Christianity in Europe during a period when Muslim rule was overrunning the remains of the old Roman and Persian empires. Most historians assume that the two armies met where the rivers Clain and Vienne joined between Tours and Poitiers. The number of troops in each army is not known. The Mozarabic Chronicle of 754, a Latin contemporary source which describes the battle in greater detail than any other Latin or Arabic source, states that the people of Austrasia, the Frankish forces, greater in number of soldiers and formidably armed, killed the king, Abd Rahman, which agrees with many Arab and Muslim historians. However, virtually all Western sources disagree, and estimate the Franks at 30,000, less than half the Muslim force. Some modern historians, using estimates of what the land was able to support, and what Martel could have raised from his realm and supported during the campaign, believed the total Muslim force, counting the outlying raiding parties, which rejoined the main body before Tours, outnumbered the Franks. Drawing on non-contemporary Muslim sources, Creasy describes the Umayyad forces as 80,000 strong or more. Writing in 1999, Paul K. Davis estimates the Umayyad forces at 80,000 and the Franks at about 30,000. While noting that modern historians have estimated the strength of the Umayyad army at Tours at between 20 minus 80,000. However, Edward J. Schoenfeld contends that, estimates that the Umayyads had over 50,000 troops are logistically impossible. Similarly, 
Historian Victor Davis Hansen believes both armies were roughly the same size, about 30,000 men. Modern historians may be more accurate than the medieval sources as the modern figures are based on estimates of the logistical ability of the countryside to support these numbers of men and animals. Both Davis and Hansen point out that both armies had to live off the countryside, neither having a commissary system sufficient to provide supplies for a campaign. Other sources give the following estimates. Gore places the Frankish army at 15,000-20,000, although other estimates range from 30,000 to 80,000. In spite of wildly varying estimates of the Saracen force, he places that army as around 20,000-25,000. Other estimates also range up to 80,000. With 50,000 not an uncommon estimate, losses during the battle are unknown but chroniclers later claimed that Charles Martel's force lost about 1,500 while the Mayad force was said to have suffered massive casualties of up to 375,000 men. However, these same casualty figures were recorded in the Liber Pontificalis for Duke Oddo of Aquitaine's victory at the Battle of Toulouse. Paul the Deacon reported correctly in his Historia Longobardorum that the Liber Pontificalis mentioned these casualty figures in relation to Odo's victory at Toulouse. But later writers, probably influenced by the continuations of Fredegar, attributed the Saracen casualties solely to Charles Martel, and the battle in which they fell became unequivocally that of Poitiers, the Vita Pardolfi, written in the middle of the 8th century. Reports that after the battle, Abd al-Rahman's forces burned and looted their way through the Limousin on their way back to Al-Andalus which implies that they were not destroyed to the extent imagined in the continuations of Fredegar. The Moors, the invasion of Hispania, and then Gaul, was led by the Umayyad dynasty, the first dynasty of caliphs of the Islamic Empire after the reign of the four rightly guided caliphs ended. The Umayyad Caliphate, at the time of the Battle of Tours, was perhaps the world's foremost military power. Great expansion of the Caliphate occurred under the reign of the Umayyads. Muslim armies pushed east across Persia and west across North Africa through the late 7th century. In 711-18, Tariq ibn Ziyad led forces across the Strait of Gibraltar to conquer in the Visigothic Kingdom of Hispania. The Muslim empire under the Umayyads was now a vast domain that ruled a diverse array of peoples. It had destroyed what were the two former foremost military powers, the Sassanid Empire, which it absorbed completely, and the greater part of the Byzantine Empire, including Syria, Armenia and North Africa. Although Leo the Isaurian stemmed the tide when he defeated the Umayyads at the Battle of Akrawanon, their final campaign in Anatolia. The Franks, the Frankish realm under Charles Martel was the foremost military power of Western Europe. During most of his tenure in office as commander-in-chief of the Franks, it consisted of North and Eastern France, most of Western Germany, and the Low Countries. The Frankish realm had begun to progress towards becoming the first real imperial power in Western Europe since the fall of Rome. However, it continued to struggle against external forces such as the Saxons, Frisians, and other opponents such as the Basque Aquitanians led by Odo the Great, Duke over Aquitaine and Vasconia, Muslim conquests from Hispania the Umayyad troops, under al-Samh ibn Malik al-Kaulani, the Governor-General of Al-Andalus, over around Septimania by 719, following their sweep up the Iberian Peninsula, Al-Samh set up his capital from 720 at Narbonne, which the Moors called Arbuna. With the port of Narbonne secure, the Umayyads swiftly subdued the largely unresisting cities of Alat, Beziers, Agde, Lod of Maglon, and Neme, still controlled by their Visigothic counts. The Umayyad campaign into Aquitaine suffered a temporary setback at the Battle of Toulouse. Duke Oddo of Aquitaine broke the siege of Toulouse, taking Al-Samh ibn Malik's forces by surprise. Al-Samh ibn Malik was mortally wounded. 
This defeat did not stop incursions into Old Roman Gaul, as Moorish forces, soundly based in Narbonne and easily resupplied by sea, struck eastwards in the 720s, penetrating as far as Autun in Burgundy in 725, threatened by both the Umayyads in the south and by the Franks in the north. In 730 Odo allied himself with the Berber commander Uthman ibn Nasser called Munazar, by the Franks, the deputy governor of what would later become Catalonia. To seal the alliance, Uthman was given Odo's daughter Lampage in marriage, and Moorish raids across the Pyrenees, Odo's southern border, ceased. However, the next year, the Berber leader killed the bishop of Erdal Nambodis and detached from his Arabs masters in Cordova. Abdul Rahman in turn sent an expedition to crush his revolt, and next directed his attention against Truthman's ally Odo. The Aquitanian duke Odo collected his army at Bordeaux, but was defeated, and Bordeaux plundered. During the following Battle of the River Garonne, the Mozarabic Chronicle of 754 commented that, God alone knows the number of the slain. The Mozarabic Chronicle of 754 continues, saying they pierced through the mountains, trampled over rough and level ground, plundered far into the country of the Franks, and smote all with the sword, insomuch that when Udo came to battle with them at the River Garonne, he fled. Odo's appeal to the Franks Odo, who despite the heavy losses was reorganizing his troops, gave the Frankish leader notice of the impending danger knocking on the heartland of his realm, and appealed to the Franks for assistance, which Charles Martel only granted after Odo agreed to submit to Frankish authority. It appears that the Mayads were not aware of the true strength of the Franks. The Umayyad forces were not particularly concerned about in any of the Germanic tribes, including the Franks, and the Arab chronicles of that age show that awareness of the Franks as a growing military power only came after the Battle of Tours. Further, the Umayyads appear not to have scouted northward for potential foes, for if they had, they surely would have noted Charles Martel as a force to be reckoned with in his own account because of his growing domination of much of Europe from 717. This might have alerted the Umayyads that a real power led by a gifted general was rising from the ashes of the Western Roman Empire. Umayyad advanced towards the Loire in 732. The Umayyad advance force was proceeding north towards the River Loire having outpaced their supply train and a large part of their army. Essentially, having easily destroyed all resistance in that part of Gaul, the invading army had split off into several raiding parties, while the main body advanced more slowly. The Umayyads delayed their attack to so late in the year probably because many men and horses needed to live off the land as they advanced, thus they had to wait until the area's wheat harvest was ready and then until a reasonable amount of the harvest was threshed and stored. The further north, the later the harvest is, and while the men could kill farm livestock for food, horses cannot eat meat and needed grain as food. A military explanation for why Odo was defeated so easily at Bordeaux and at the Garonne having won eleven years earlier at the Battle of Toulouse is simple. At Toulouse, Odo managed a basic surprise attack against an overconfident and unprepared foe, all of whose defensive works were aimed inward. While he attacked from the outside, the Umayyad forces were mostly infantry, and what cavalry they had never got a chance to mobilize and meet him in open battle. As Herman of Carinthia wrote in one of his translations of A History of Al-Andalus, Odo managed a highly successful encircling envelopment which took the attackers totally by surprise, and the result was a chaotic slaughter of the Muslim forces. At Bordeaux, and again at the Garonne, the Umayyad forces were cavalry, not infantry, and were not taken by surprise, and given the chance to mass for battle, which led to the devastation of Odo's army, almost all of whom were killed with minimal losses to the Muslims. Odo's forces, like other European troops of that era, lacked stirrups, and therefore had no heavy cavalry. Virtually all of their troops were infantry. 
the Umayyad heavy cavalry broke the Frankish infantry in their first charge, and then slaughtered them at will as they broke and ran. The invading force went on to devastate southern Gaul. A possible motive, according to the second continuator of Fredegar, was the riches of the Abbey of St. Martin of Tours the most prestigious and holiest shrine in Western Europe at the time. Upon hearing this, Austrasia's mayor of the palace, Charles Martel, collected his army and marched south, avoiding the old Roman roads and hoping to take the Muslims by surprise. Because he intended to use a phalanx, it was essential for him to choose the battlefield. His plan, to find a high-wooded plain, form his men and force the Muslims to come to him, depended on the element of surprise. 